What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I want to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Spoilers! Mario Sith, Iris Ohm, Christopher Oldacker Jr., Reed Rudder, Riftingard, James Moyner, Ace Demodome, Hayoka, E.E. E. Trueborn, Nat, Priya Dali, Noah Barnes. Oh, I got a new tool. Wait, is this a... Oh my gosh, dude! I can melt through metal now. Yay! Any upgrades available? Hello, hello. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I got a full minute of blowtorch. <laughs> well, this is a bit casual, don't you think, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nick uh, is currently not having the microphone in front of his face because, as you can see, Nick is eating. He is, he's uh, partaking of some high-quality uh, rice and uh, some chicken and... and broccoli and shrimp. Yeah, all Maybe the... Only one shrimp. Yeah. Maybe so. <laughs> yeah, so... After I finished eating it and everything, uh, Nick 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 took his piece of it. Now he's just like sitting over there, just enjoying it. Me, I, I ate my fill earlier, but I'm doing intermittent fasting right now. So like, Nick brings me a shit ton of food during a window where I'm allowed to eat. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll take that. Because <laughs> he has to stop at midnight every night. That's that's the deal. He can eat between 4 p.m. and midnight. He can eat anything he wants, but that's it. So, yeah, if it starts working for Nick, who knows? I might try it. Who knows? Maybe uh, this gut will disappear. We'll have to see. But we're doing this as a little bit of a casual thing while Nick is doing that. Uh, Mark Rover, the genius man that he is, has made another backyard squirrel maze. Uh, he made one previously. It was the uh, Ninja Warrior course. Now he's made one called the Walnut Heist with... <laughs> complete with, and I kid you not, a vault full of walnuts called Fort Nuts. Jesus, the puns with this man. But while Nick is sitting here eating and enjoying himself, we're, we figured we'd just come on here casually and uh, just talk about this and see what happens. Anyway. <laughs> well, the place that we ordered it from, like, dude, the line was halfway around, like, Pretty much a fully encircling the entire damn restaurant. Last time I tried to go there and get some sushi, and they were out in the street. I was like, I guess never mind. <laughs> it was worth it though. Good food, great, great food. Anyway, let's uh, let's go ahead and get into this. This is a bird feeder, and everything you see surrounding me in my yard is an attempt to protect it from four thieving squirrels. If they want the bird seed and the lifetime supply of walnuts in this bank vault, they'll first need to pass through my nine part obstacle course. By design, it's extremely challenging. <laughs> it's meant to test their mental limits and their physical limits. I held back no punches, but I have to admit in hindsight, I once again completely underestimated my adversary. And truthfully, I never thought I'd be that crazy guy in the neighborhood obsessing over the squirrels, but they started at first when they would constantly pillage the bird seed from any bird feeder I would put up about a year ago. That led to me defending it with an obstacle course which they handily defeated, and so after a year of ruminating on how to avenge that L, <laughs> no, 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 do it, Mark. and then two months of planning, my buddy John and I got together for a 20 second build montage.
Kay's being a NASA engineer, doesn't it? Fortnite. Look at all them marble nuts. Jesus. Here are the basic elements. For starters, here's their favorite bird feeder at the end of the course, and it's sitting atop Fort Nuts, the most secure walnut vault in the western United States. Now since birds can fly, they can come and go as they please and eat all the food they want. But the only way for the squirrels to make it right here is by surviving my nine part grueling obstacle course. Which all starts right here. Climbing up this pole to this platform is the single gateway to enter the course. Every other pole you see has some kind of countermeasure to keep the squirrel from just climbing up and then entering the course halfway through. And so the first challenge is this casino, yeah. which may seem like an odd choice until you realize that as we were building the course, we also built them some cozy little squirrel houses. So we put them Aww. up in a couple different trees and after a few days, it looked like they'd actually made some renovations. So I went to take a closer look. And sure enough, Here's the before, and here's the after. Even on the inside, they yeah. made some questionable decor updates. Uh. So while it might look like they were just using the houses to relax, or stretch, or look out the window, or like, um, uh. the satellite communications gear, and the tactical mission planning, and the mini vault to practice cracking a safe hold a completely different story. This gang of four high-end professional birdseed thieves were secretly planning to pull off an honest-to-goodness Mission Impossible Ocean's Eleven-style mega walnut heist. All right. Which is why I was going to protect the birdseed and walnut vault with the most state-of-the-art security measures, just like the casino did in Ocean's Eleven. So once in the casino, <laughs> you'll see the slot machine and the classic Vegas buffet, but with a warning. Take more than an ounce, and you're going to have to deal with security. Ah. Now that I got the squirrels on the run, they'll naturally want to jump to this bar. But there's a twist. Oh. Like an actually twist, which I think is going to give them some problems. But if they can figure this out, they'll jump into this crate. And the good news is that it's filled to the brim with their favorite food, which is walnuts. And I know this because I tested a bunch of different options, and they always went with the walnuts first. But the bad news is that once you add a little weight to the system, the helicopter starts moving, just like the helicopter for Mission Impossible. Oh, and we've got a baffle here at the top to stop a squirrel from just crawling along the wire from the Mark, The helicopter stops next to the squirrel, which you. seems simple enough, except that the bricks randomly move and adjust themselves in and out. And of course, at any time, if they fall off, they gotta go back and start over the whole course from the beginning. After that, we come to their hideout. And this is when they'll switch from defense to offense, because it's where they hang out and play. You can see it's sort of messy with their tools and their blueprints on the wall that show if they open the floor on the elevator, the- <laughs> I saw that there. A little picture of Mark up here crossed out. <laughs> That's genius. I love this. See with their tools and their blueprints on the wall that show if they open the floor on the elevator, the elevator shaft leads them underground and into the sewers. Then if they crawl through the sewers, it will take them right to the control center for a second room that might look familiar. And just like in Mission Impossible, their oh. goal is to go up through the ceiling to access the air vents. But there's no way to make it up there unless they type the password into the keyboard in the control room next door like this. Oh, I don't know if they're going to be able to figure that At out. At that point, they can climb the ladder and they're in the vents. And the vents are a total maze. There's lots of different twists and turns they'll need to navigate up here. So at any moment, if they're too lost, they can always exit the whole course by using the one-way squirrel emergency exit, which also exists for any enclosed room on the whole course. And for the penultimate challenge, it's back down from the air ducts through this laser maze where they'll have to harness their inner Catherine Zeta-Jones. If they sufficiently touch any of the lasers, the metal base contact... I, I mean, honestly, dude, get... She hasn't trapped me and Sean Connery. She didn't trap me any day. Dude, that movie made me fall in love with her. I just always have to reference frickin' uh, workaholics anytime now that I... Really? Oh. Yeah, because that's the that's from Workaholics. It's like they're all tripping balls in the. Uh, and they all watch Entrapment. Um, they trip balls at their work. Well, I know that. And um, so they they stay overnight because their house was being fumigated for cockroaches after they found a baby cockroach in Durs's ear. Oh. And uh, these two guys show up at night, and they think they're trying to like rob the company. And they're freaking out, so they set up this whole trap thing, and it's like, uh, we first up the laser field, and it's like, physically, it does absolutely nothing, but mentally, total annihilation, and it's just a bunch of laser pointers, like, set, like, pointed across, like, the hall. Yeah. Like, 
And uh, then I, <coughs> Adam starts singing, Catherine Zeta-Jones, she dips beneath the lasers, oh. Then at the end of the episode, they discover the two uh, guys that broke in were just the IT guys, and they offer them some mushrooms as well. And then they're all just laying there looking at the star uh, thing that they projected up on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, um, I think they put glow in the dark stars up on the ceiling and made their own like constellations, and they're just all in there and all sorts of singing. Catherine Zeta Jones, she dips beneath the lasers. Oh, she has entrapped me and Sean Connery. Have you ever seen Entrapment? No. Dude, such a good movie. I mean, and also made me fall in love with Catherine Zeta Jones because, good God, she was a stunner in that film. Still is a very beautiful woman, even to this day. ...and completes the circuit, which sends a signal from this microcontroller to a relay to a solenoid, which causes this pneumatic piston to fire, which slams this door shut for one minute. And because I'm basically certain they'll try and get to this point by climbing from the roof on top of this tube, I've placed a shield here with another enforcement squirrel to try and deter them. <laughs> and so finally, if they made it through the laser maze and everything that came before it, They've made it to Fortnite's. And as far as I'm concerned, if they crack the safe by giving this handle a little turn, they've earned every last walnut in this bank. <laughs> After okay. the course was set up, they could definitely smell the walnuts in the vault. And then you could see them sort of working things out from the fence line. And so uh. after two months of prep work, it was time to test our extensive security measures against this formidable set of 500 gram rodents. But before we do that, I just want to mention, if you've always thought it would be cool to be able to build something like a squirrel obstacle course yourself, then I've got incredible news because a few times a year, I teach a month long creative engineering course and enrollment for the summer session is open for a short window right now. This class okay. covers my entire engineering design process. I'll show you every step. Over the course of a month, you're going to watch me design and create three builds from scratch, but the best part is I'm going to guide you through finishing three creative builds of your own. So whether you're a complete beginner or an experienced engineer, the class has been designed to meet you wherever you're at and then level up your skills. So go to monthly.com slash Mark Rover or use the link in the video description and then sign up and let's hang out making some cool stuff this summer. Now let's see some squirrels. I would love to do that, but I don't know if I have the time to attend over the next month. Yeah. Or however long. Well. Or whenever it starts up, I mean. I don't know. And right out of the gate, we got him with the buffet. And as he sticks his entire face under the sneeze guard, absentmindedly reading the sign, you can see the exact moment he realizes he might have screwed up. <laughs> like, yeah, and yeah. The slow Get out of here. Just really laying himself out. Oh, by the way, that's Rick. All four squirrels have names, and more importantly, like any crew looking to pull off a heist, they all have specific roles to play. Starting with everyone's favorite, Fat Gus. Who yeah, he's our boy. This operation. <laughs> On a heist, this is the role of the Frank Ocean or an Ethan Hunt. Now, I just have to say, for those who aren't familiar, last year I named one of the squirrels Fat Gus because he loved to eat and was a little on the hefty side. But then halfway through, I noticed he had nipples, which it turns out means he was actually a girl and a pregnant one at that. So it was just a whole PR disaster. And I switched <laughs> the name to Fantastic Gus and rephrased a few other things. But to be honest, Fantastic Gus just doesn't roll off the tongue like Fat Gus. So I asked permission to use my preferred phrasing. And as you can see, I got full consent. <laughs> <laughs> the, the grease name. Okay, but look, the marriage male or female, I was like, hey, it's fat, as in, like, cool, you yeah. know? And... Spell with a PH. Yeah. It's not insulting. Exactly. The gutsy one. He's the go-to for any task that is going to require some athletic abilities. And then we've got Marty. He's the hacker. Anything with computers or bank safes, and he's your guy. But while he's really smart, he also scares pretty easy. And finally, we've got Frank with logistics. A good heist starts with a good plan. He's got the whole course memorized, and he's mapped it out and provided blueprints for the team. <laughs> and so back to the course, we've got Marty the Hacker here, who again is a bit skittish, so you can see he's coming in pretty cautious. But who can resist a buffet? <laughs> Once again, the real magic is found in the slow-mo. <laughs> You can almost hear me all. Oh, hell no! Too tight at this casino, and Rick goes straight to the twist bar. And oh, shit. Here's try two. No! Whoa. <laughs> huh. All right. And with some motivation for the bird, he's like, I got this, I got this, I got this. I don't think I got this. Oh. 
The real time yeah, to jump for this is great Natty too. Natty would have got it. <laughs> 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 like, I'm gonna need that crate of walnuts. Okay, <laughs> how it's done. Which turns out somewhat predictably. <laughs> oh, yeah. he's uh, hanging uh, off. Uh, uh, I can make it. I've seen I this happen it. to many people in Ninja uh, Warrior, and they never I make it back make up it. once they fall. Like really this. frustrated, Acrobat Daredevil Rick tries a totally different route. <laughs> no, nope. he tried. Got to admire uh, that. Uh, Look at that. Uh, yeah! Oh fuck. crap! Almost. Logistics man Frank knows the wire connected to the fence leads to the helicopter crate, so he tries sneaking in the back door. No can do. <laughs> and is also forced to retreat. And finally, Marty the Hacker Not realizes crap. if you're just scared and you run real fast, the bar doesn't have time to spin on you. And you can see Rick just replicating the strategy. <laughs> so after about two days, all of them could cruise through the first part of this course about this fast, and Fort Nuts was already feeling less and less secure. Fat Gus is like, wait, is this thing moving? I'm good. <laughs> here Rick hypothesizes if he doesn't sit in the crate, it won't move. And here he rejects that hypothesis with a legendary leap. And now's a good time to remind ourselves that squirrels are one of the few mammals that can survive a fall from any height. Because as you can see here, they make their body super flat to increase drag, effectively becoming their own parachute. But just in case, you okay Rick? Yep. All good. Yeah, I'm good. And Marty the Hacker, Freddy Cat, is just like... Yeah, I'm super not down with this. Eventually, it's the fearless leader, Fat Gus, who demonstrates the ride is definitely worth it. And soon you've got Frank and the rest of the gang following suit. Which leads us to the wall of a thousand moving bricks. And first up, you got Fat Gus, who kicks things right off with a pull of his parachute. And Rick so just barely misses. Ah! Skittish Marty gets one taste of a moving brick and absolutely yeets himself into this tree. <laughs> yeah. And while there were plenty of instances where a moving brick did dump the squirrels, causing them to start over from the beginning, what was even better was Marty psyching himself out in the anticipation that a brick might move, even though the wall wasn't powered on for any of these clips. <laughs> 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 and that was in part to the dutiful supervision of Fat Gus, Eventually, like all the other challenges so far, they got it down to a science where they could cruise by the wall fairly quickly. And now's a good time to mention, the squirrels weren't the only ones attempting the rat. This is Splinter the Rat, and here he is with one of his buddies. He liked to make the rounds <laughs> to all the houses each night, which sometimes were vacant, and sometimes they weren't. There goes Frank to chase him off his lawn, hey. and you might have noticed the stuff in the house. The squirrels would gather nesting materials from various sources, or, somewhat hilariously, just steal from each other. Here's a <laughs> Santa Claus impression for all the Fat Gus fans out there. Hey. Except from Splinter and his buddies to not at all creepy possums, there's Aww. a surprisingly constant variety of wildlife that passes through a suburban backyard, including a dumb dog who for some reason is much less interested in squirrels than he is my camera gear. Which is a lovely oh, segue on, back man. to the squirrel hideout, where the heist was really just picking up steam. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Do it. There you go. <laughs> Get it. You got it. Oh. No. Going the wrong way, bud. There you go. Okay. You can make it. Ah. Now what? Now where to go? Now where do we go? Okay. He's gonna figure this out like right away, I bet. Yep. He got Didn't it. Taking long at all. Wow. They did it. Ha ha ha. And after Hacker Marty had accessed the computer and lowered the ladder, Fat Gus followed behind and joined him in the vents. But in the process, a critical tool dropped down, which led to a lovely recreation of an iconic scene. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> they made it. And as a side note, they figured out the exit door pretty quickly, and they functioned as a one-way door exactly as intended. 
And now with the vents, it was Frank's time to shine. You can see here, he's just double checking the actual air duct layouts to make sure they match the blueprints he's memorized. And once he's satisfied, he steps up, and as you can see, he nails it first try. You can Dang. just sense his confidence here. That is smart. That is like, smart I think he smart. literally memorized Contrast it from Marty, the outside before he like, lands on right. it. I think it was a right, no, it was straight. Oh, was it left? <sighs> Crap, I gotta go check the map again. And as a result, most of his runs would end up looking something like this. So here's Frank coaching him from the outside, and you can see Marty's a little defensive about it. So Frank hops in so they can work out their differences, and then with a little encouragement, he gets him going down the right way. All the while, Fat Gus continues to supervise. Focus, Marty. There you go. Yeah, that's a good boy. Which brings us to the laser maze. Here's Acrobat Rick's first approach, and he's like, mm, yeah, that's us. And just as expected, <laughs> he climbs on top of the tube, and he's like, yeah, I totally got this. When in fact, he didn't have it. In real time, it happens so fast, it just looks like chaos. But if we slow down this second attempt, we can remind ourselves of how squirrels have mastered the laws of physics to always land on their feet. Did you catch it? Yep. The first is the locking of the head on a landing target in less than 300 milliseconds. If you go back and watch any jump from this video, that locking of their head is the first thing they always do. And the second is using conservation of angular momentum like an ice skater to pull their arms and legs in and out at the right times to rotate fast and then hold in the right orientation. Combine those two tricks with the flat body parachute and extending their legs at the last minute to absorb the shock, and they are perfectly adapted for living high in the trees. In fact, squirrels have been around for over 30 million years, and they've had to evolve relatively little in all that time. So then Rick's like, fine, there you go. I'll use the stupid tube like a normal squirrel. What is this? Uh, see, I knew this was sus. Yeah. And here's Frank, who just watched what happened and therefore is appropriately cautious. And <laughs> he hops right back on the saddle, and this time he nails it. And hey, then it nice. feels appropriate that the mastermind, Fat Gus, was the first one to make it successfully through the laser maze, and then to subsequently make it to Fort Nuts. I mean, how Fat Gus is this? Falling not just for one decoy nut, but two. But for both of them. Which paves the way for Marty the Hacker to be the one to crack the safe, and as you can see here, he's pretty stoked about it. Oh my gosh, I made it. And first yeah. he just checks it out, like, yep, mm hmm yep, yep, this is just like the schematic show. And then, the big moment. Yeah! Ooh. Even lets little nets down, <laughs> cargo nets down, so they can climb up. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. You're gonna make the... Mark, Mark, you are going to make the little animals in your neighborhood so fat. Yeah. But honestly, <laughs> eh, it's fine. Open these cargo nets unfurled, which just allowed better access to their loot. But interestingly, more often than not, after getting a walnut, instead of jumping off, they would go all the way back through the course. Here's Jumpy Marty exhibiting <laughs> some real PTSD, even though I'd already. We're playing off Legends of the Hidden Temple. So once again, the yeah. Took they get the, the artifact, and they're like, "No, we gotta go back. Concerned. We gotta go back." Oh yeah, by the way, I signed us up for that. <laughs> Hell yeah. They earned it. And Hopefully I can't we get called. That would be awesome. Because Rick buried all his extra nuts. Although in the I think yard. I'm too out of shape to actually win it at this point. <laughs> Marty and Frank made up and rekindled their friendship, and Fat Gus got some long sought quality time with the bird feeder. So everyone was happy. Well, almost everyone. <laughs> this is a mechanism that can feed your dog with a pull of a lever. And this is a contraption that measures the soil moisture level and then gives your plants a voice. Hey, I need a little water over here. That's delicious. Thank you. <laughs> this is a machine that measures how long you've been sitting and then annoys the crud out of you till you take a stretch break. This is a contraption that can draw anything on a whiteboard. And this is a secret safe for your most valuable possessions. Uh -huh. And finally, this is a G-Day Lunchables assembly line. Are you kidding me? And what do all of those have in common? They were created by people who took my month-long creative engineering course. I just launched this class for the first time a few months ago, and it was so freaking rewarding to see what everybody learned and created as a result. 
<laughs> for the most part. <laughs> and because we got so much overwhelmingly positive feedback on the course, we're doing it again. You can sign up for it now. This class covers my full engineering design process, all the way from how I come up with an idea, to prototyping, to finalizing the build and giving it character. I show you everything that I'm thinking, everything that I'm doing, and I do it three times. Over the course of a month, you're going to watch me design and create three totally original builds, and I'm going to guide you through finishing three creative builds of your own. And this is an online class, so you can take it from anywhere and work it around your schedule, but it's fully immersive and intensive. So whether you're a working professional or you're taking the class as a family, whether you're a complete beginner or an experienced engineer, this class has been designed to meet you where you're at and then level up your skills. So go to monthly.com slash Mark Rover or use the link in the video description to see what other people had to say about their experience and then enroll and I'll see you in class. Okay. Hell yeah. I would I would consider doing that if I had the if I had the time to do that, but we're we got other projects coming up here soon that's gonna that, <laughs> plus you got your bands and all that that you're in. It's just I'd like to. Maybe maybe I'll look at them after uh after they're over and like take them at my own pace, maybe. If he does that that way, I guess. Like, I mean I don't know if it'll be available after the class or not. Well, it's always imperative to, like, know engineering a little bit. I mean, that way you can work on stuff yourself and uh, be inventive in a lot of ways. It's actually pretty cool uh, Pretty cool stuff. I really, really, really like it. But, <clears throat> yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's going to do it, everyone. This was uh, Backyard Squirrel Maze 2.0, the Walnut Heist. Pretty good. Pretty good, not going to lie. It was... Very well designed, very entertaining all the way through. Fat Gus or uh, Fantastic Gus or, you know, I just call her Fat Gus. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. But I can't remember. Did we react to the first one of these or did I just watch I it myself? Don't. I think we just watched it ourselves. Yeah. I think we watched it. Uh, yeah, we watched it in the basement at uh, Mia. We were, uh, uh, we were watching it on Facebook, I think, because he posts these on Facebook a little bit after he does the originals. Or if he posted on uh, YouTube originally. But yeah, that was really good. So, thank you all again for tuning in. And I guess until next time, everyone, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you then, everyone. Peace out.